Hello everyone, my name is Polish Links. Welcome to Everlasting Summer Mods and User Scenarios. This time, One Pioneer Story, the last story we have to complete. Let's go. Uh, someone is breathing heavily. Wait, can I move in this game by myself? That would be nice to move around the pioneer camp. Forest. What the heck are you running? Another forest. I mean, deeper forest. And we are even deeper in the forest. Is he going to the old camp? <clears throat> My world is empty, as empty as I am. I destroyed myself to become a whole world, a world of emptiness that destroyed me. I believe I had someone's fate in my hands, the power to end the lives of others. But I was only wandering in the darkness, vainly hiding from any new beam of light, every one of which was only spawning empty shadows. Every shadow was my faceless reflection, a cloud of absolute darkness with a single goal to consume. I was hiding from them, merging with them. They were becoming me and I was becoming them and finally it didn't matter which one of us is on that side of the mirror. Okay. Although in this case it not, it's not just a cliché phrase or the reflection of a crude loser. It is a fact. Even though this wasn't the case before, even though before the words were many and my life could be called a life. Because it all ended in a single moment. First was this damn bus, again, everywhere, and a crowd of those joyfully whooping pioneers around, the same as me. And then again, and again, and again, like a vivid kaleidoscope of faces, events, emotions and feelings. But who the hell cares anymore? You know, if a man has died, he will regret what he didn't have time for, what he didn't do, what he didn't say, rather than exactly how his life journey ended. But am I in one of those places where the souls go after death? And everything could have been different too. It doesn't matter that the end is always one and the same. If the road it can vary, it depends on my choice. It did before. So when did everything change? The different versions of events, the lines of life, the people's fates seem to intertwine several times over, resulting in something like a rope of doom which you can only hang yourself on. So when did it all change? <coughs> Surely not in a single day, a single hour, but certainly so fast I didn't even have time to notice. Interesting, interesting. The rays of summer shine into my eyes. A summer one. Uh, well, who would have thought what is prize? But it was winter yesterday. Or was it yesterday? I know there is a pack of cigarettes and a matchbox tucked away in the driver's glove box. My head spooned from the deep breaths I inhaled and the nasty smell of menthol feathered my brain with a chill. Cosmos for export. They could damn well make stuff for export then, unlike now. Nuclear reactors, rifles, cigarettes and communism. Lots of communism, in boxers, crates, containers, in the cargo holds of ships, in the freight section of planes, in the good wagons of trains, even in the spaceships. Ever more communism to the pygmies of Africa, Incans of South Afri America, Papuans of New Guinea. And I guess we can drop a package for the penguins in Antarctica too. So I'm raving. Finishing the first cigarette I stared at the gates and started to wait. 
I don't even need a clock, there's an unfolding internal chrome matter working in my head. Now just a little bit longer. One of the doors squeaked this disgustingly and opened up a, up a bit, and from behind it picked out a girl in a pioneer uniform who looked around and noticed me. Walking closer she sniffed the heavy, hot air and seemed to be a bit surprised, but immediately smiled and spoke. Hi, you must be new, then you? Go! What? Why would you say that to her? I shouted, got up and went to the camp, ignoring her. It was hilarious once, then it was fun, now it's a, just a habit. It wasn't hilarious and it was not fun at all. A foolish but obsessive habit, like putting different things in different pockets. I, for example, can't carry a phone in my right pocket, because... Hell if I know why. And it's the same deal. Insulting girl in the morning is a good start to the day. No, it isn't. I met another pioneer girl on the way. To be more precise, she tried to hit me on the back, but I jumped away in time and glared at her in a way that seemed to make the poor girl suddenly come up with more urgent things to do. The camp leader's hood was drowning in a storm of lulax. Can it just drown already, damn it? The loud slam of the door distracted the occupant from reading some book. No, I really never wondered what the camp leader read. Without undressing, I hopped onto the bed and threw my feet in their winter boots up on the backboard. What do you think you're doing? And for what? For that matter? Who are you? The camp leader asked, genuinely resentful. Shut your mouth, woman. I said Leslie. Okay, so are we the bad guy now? I don't like him. She was petrified, unable to say words. It's always like this, every damn time. Better yet, tell me, why have you still not found yourself a man? How old are you? 25? Late 20s? You should understand the way the world works at this age. <coughs> For a moment, a heavy silence hung in the room. You don't know? I tell you, I will tell you then. Who the hell would want someone like you? Me? For example, me? I wouldn't mind. The camp leader's house resounded with a loud laugh, or even something more like a horse neigh, with, while a familiar medley rang outside. A couple of times I tried to find out where the super music was coming from, so instead of it the speakers would play something more or less cherry throughout the camp. I didn't fall. Looks like this angelic singing needs neither a player nor wires or electricity. To hell with it then. For example, right now I wouldn't be against the whole camp, hearing my laugh, hearing my laugh, laugh. But at home, not at myself, no. I'm just laughing because laughter is a wonderful defense mechanism and a way to allay the boredom. How much does a minute of laughter give you? Five minutes of life? Well, it's of no use to me. I'm a de facto immortal. I just need a notarial certification. How dare you talk this way to your elder? Oh yeah dear, change the track already, will you? Honestly, I'm sick of listening to the same thing time and time again. Let's try it this way. Hello, how are you doing? See, it's not that difficult. Okay, you're there now. What? Not what, it's... Hello, how are you doing? And I will reply, thanks, bad as always. And maybe I'll even add thanks to your prayers. Get out of here, I'll call the police. Oh, with the Pigeon Express, the phone isn't working. Yeah, but I... I... The computer faltered. Over. I reached into my pocket, the left one. Took out my mobile and threw it to her. Here, try it. The computer caught the phone. It jumped around several times with her hands and almost fell to the floor. What is this? A phone. I gave a short answer and closed my eyes. That thing you know, ting a ling a ling the telephone began to ring. Are you sick in the head? The computer seemed to have finally started to conquer her senses. What about you? I don't know what's happening here. Have you seen the film Groundhog Day? You haven't. Well, anyway, if that library of yours had some books on psychiatry, I would have been able to answer the question about my psychiatric condition with more certainty. That's why for now I'm only read to tell you as in a matter of, yeah, oh yeah dear, I'm sick. And again the loud devilish laugh. The computer was stunned and released the phone from her hand. It fell on the edge of the bed and bounced towards me. 
I pick up the cell at once and put it in my pocket. But not in love with you. Hey, okay. I had opening the one eye. Someone shyly knocked on the door, then it opened and the pioneer girl appeared at the doorstep. Ah, god damn it. I tragically jumped off the bed. And where is the choppa? Forgotten at home. The girl looked at the camp leader in confusion. This is... She started, then sighed and sank heavily onto the opposite bed. Actually, I knew that the camp leader isn't afraid of me. The fear is simply not included in her program. She can be resentful. Yeah, as much as you want. Imitate fright, most assuredly. But a couple of minutes will pass and she will withdraw, leaving me by. Camp leader, my foot. If I were in her shoes. This must be a bad time. The girl shyly prattled, casting her eyes down and preparing to leave. Why, don't be shy. I exclaimed hospitably, gesturing to a place nearby. Sit down now, make yourself at home. No, I... Sit down, I said. I barked. Now this girl can certainly dispain genuine fright, fear and even terror. She slowly approached and sat on my bed, clinging to the backboard. So, got anything nice to tell me? Eh? I don't want to be the bad guy. I, the same as any other kid, was taught by my parents since childhood that I shouldn't open the door to the strangers. And also that I would be better off not going who knows where when called by who knows who. But that was in childhood. And now literally everything depends on whether or not I trust a stranger. It seems like a whole life has gone by already and I had time to get old, mentally if not physically. And I forgot what winter is, snow, cold, the evening darkness, a wind that chills to the bone and the eternal moody slush. Same goes for the city, not stopping for a minute, always running somewhere and fumigating the dirty sky as people with its lines of rotten chimneys and core exhausts. It stayed in the distant past, like the faded pages of an old photo album that has been thrown into a storeroom as unnecessary. Hey! The voice of the girl sitting nearby distracted me from those thoughts. You hung up again? Still thinking about that? About what? She meant no offense and I asked again, just for the sake of it. I already knew the answer. You know, we are sitting on the library's roof, our legs dangling over the edge. Xenia leaned back a bit and her hair beautiful fluttering in the wind. The bright sun was shining through our eyes, making us squint, but it wasn't blinding, more like velvety warm and seemed to envelop your whole body in the pleasant heat of a sunny day. No. Nope. I mean, I don't know, I guess. Lately I can't always say what I'm thinking about, just a mash of thoughts in my head. I felt silent for a moment and looked at Xenia. She looked like she was uninterested not only in our conversation but in everything happening around her in general. As if this girl was okay with everything, the summer, the sun, the pleasant wind, or yeah, our youth. As if this is enough for her to be happy and the rest are just foolish trivialities. In short, you get what I'm saying, why do you even ask? Because a uh, human is a social creature, creature, it's supposed to communicate with others like it. She grinned almost unnoticeably. Oh, that's nice, let's grin it. Yeah, right. Who, who's talking? Wait here. I'll go get the award for the most communicative pre-owner of the year 1980 whatever. What about me? I, unlike some people, have quite specific responsibilities in this camp. I'm a respected member of our collective irreplaceable event. In a sense. In contrast to you. Xenia's eyes sparked as she grinned mockingly. Responsibilities. Yeah, sure. I caught my eyes with palm and leaned back. Seriously, can you hear yourself? Responsibilities. Collective. Hey! Xenia said sternly and poked my belly. Oh! I moaned mostly theatrically and cast a wrathful glance in her direction. What if I fell down? Hurt myself, huh? That would be highly regrettable. There isn't even a place to get life insurance here. Yeah, and there'd be no one to pay the reimbursement to afterwards. 
Well, no one is. I rubbed the back of my head, smiled dumbly and said, What about you? Eh? Xenia thought for a second. Well, maybe for... I don't think the canteen accept dollars, euro, credit cards, or at the very least, Russian rubles. And there's probably no currency exchange here either. And even if there was, who knows how do ex the exchange rate is doing. I don't want to suffer from the inflation, you know. Demand that you pay in gold. God, my ass. She threw herself on me, trying to either tickle me, squeeze me, beat me down, or all of the bo above. Alright, let's end this episode here and we'll continue that story in the next one. Bye.